It's LeBron versus Jordan, a debate for the ages. And today, we are finally gonna answer the eternal question, will LeBron ever surpass Jordan in the box office? That's right, we're not talking about points per game. The only question that matters today is who Space Jam is the best? Now let's get into it. Space Jam versus Space Jam 2, a new legacy. Let's start this epic battle off by taking a trip back to 1996. Here, the original Space Jam was released back in November. Directed by Joe Pitka, this film was actually based off an idea from two Nike ads which featured Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny. Being released nearly 25 years ago, this film had its fair share of technical challenges to overcome. Being a mix of both live action and animation, the original studio needed to call on for a little bit of additional help for this movie. It would go on to take 19 months for the productions to finish, with a big part of that being due to needing over 700 workers just for the animation in this film. At the end of the day, the production cost would add up to over $80 million. Michael Jordan did not star in this film alone. He also had the likes of Larry Bird, Bill Murray, Charles Barley, Danny DeVito, and Billy West to name a few. Tons of basketball stars did go on to make some cameo appearances in this movie as well. Once the film slammed into theaters, moviegoers were instantly drawn to the unique concept and as a result, this movie would bring in over $250 million. This is the highest grossing basketball movie of all time and actually it was the 10th highest grossing film of that year. Some other heavy hitters included 101 Dalmatians at number 6, Mission Impossible at number 3, and finally, we have Independence Day topping the charts at over $817 million taking the crown. Now while the fans enjoy the movie, the critics were not as kind. It received mixed to average reviews from most critics, while only a handful such as Roger Ebert gave the film a thumbs up. One big reason for the success of this film was the merchandising. Merchandising! Where the real money from the movie is made. They had everything. CDs, action figures, t-shirts, special edition Air Jordans, a video game, pinball machines, comics, and yeah, they even had Happy Meal toys. Now this is just speculation, but it's estimated that the merchandise sales added over $1.2 billion to the Space Jam franchise. However, some sources say it was higher and the sales may have topped $6 billion. Not only that, but the movie's album managed to go six times platinum. So, as an entire franchise, it definitely made a pretty penny. Now that we have a better idea of 96's Space Jam, it's time to take a look at the new one, Space Jam A New Legacy. Space Jam 2 had quite the journey to become a movie, but maybe Purgatory's a little more accurate in this case. Originally, Warner Bros. wanted a direct follow-up to the original, and the producers had gotten the whole crew back together. They'd already begun work based on the idea that Jordan was in for a sequel, but here's the problem, he wasn't. Before the lie came apparent and Warner Bros. axed the project, Joe Pickle was on board for the sequel and the team already had a villain inspired by Mel Brooks, who they wanted to voice the character called Berserko. So the studio adapted and pitched four main ideas. Another Space Jam starring another NBA superstar. They had Race Jam starring Jeff Gordon with NASCAR. Space Jam starring Tiger Woods. And Spy Jam starring Jackie Chan. Warner Bros actually went forward with making the Spy Jam film. But you might know it better as Looney Tunes Back in Action which ended up starring Brendan Fraser in the place of Jackie Chan. Unfortunately, Warner Bros. had some conflicting ideas with the creative team that they brought in to make the movie happen. It was described as a pretty grim experience all around and the longest year and a half of my life by the people working on set. This led the movie to only make $68 million on an $80 million budget, thus stopping the Looney Tunes from gracing the big screen for almost two decades. Until now, we have the whole crew returning to help LeBron James save his son from an evil computer program. The voices of our favorite tunes will be manned by their modern voice acting crew with the addition of Zendaya Clark as Lola Bunny. The Goon Squad, under the direction of the dastardly AI played by Don Cheadle, will have the talents of Clay Thompson as Wet Fire, Anthony Davis as The Brow, Damian Lillard as Kronos, Diana Toros as the White Mamba, and Nika Ogwamike as Arachnica. 
With this powerful mixture of NBA and WNBA talent, will the tunes fall and LeBron lose the crown? Probably not, but we're gonna see what Don Cheadle can drum up anyway. Hitting the court with a $150 million budget, this one is definitely set to be a big money maker for Warner Bros. But will it be enough to beat the original? And if it does, would it win in a best of seven? Or is this just a lucky victory for LeBron over Jordan? So I just have to know, are you team Jordan or LeBron? You the 96 Space Jam fan or 21's a new legacy? Let us know with a comment down below. And while you're down there, be sure to obliterate that subscribe button for more content like this. Once again, for the financial fixation, I'm Dominic and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.